At this time, I've called a regular meeting in the New Alm City Council for November 3rd, 2015, 5 p.m. to order. First items on the agenda is your consent agenda items. What you wish us? I'll move for a motion to approve. I'll second. You got a motion and <laughs> a second to approve the consent agenda items. Any discussion on any? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 2A. Conduct a public hearing to consider a resolution adopting the final assessment rolls for the 2014 Street Alley and or Utility Street Alley Improvements, Group 1. You got anything on that, Steve? Yes, Mr. President, thank you. Uh, this was a project constructed in 2014, the larger of the three of that particular year. Um, I believe there's 10 locations with various improvements and uh, benefits calculated from the methodology submitted in the engineer's report, which was reviewed and approved by the City Council, uh, I believe in January. It is a public hearing. There, I have not received any written comments with regard to the special assessments. And I guess I would recommend that you would just take them one at a time. Okay. Uh, since it's a public hearing, anybody here that wants to, uh, number one, Franklin Street, 6 South to 10 South? Second North Street from uh, Garden Linden, Linden Street, and second to third North Street and third Street, Linden to West Street. Number three, 12th North Street from Broadway to State. State your name and address for the record, please. Uh, James Mary Cox. I live at 610 12th Street North. Um, I was in conversation with a neighbor and found out that my assessment is 66% more than theirs. And I thought that was, I mean, I kind of figured mine would be a little more than, than theirs, which is um, 1126 North State. Um, and I did just stop at the office and they gave me an explanation, which it is what it is. I can't change that. But I just thought that 66% seemed like an awful lot difference um, for the street frontage that we have. Mm -hmm. um, and the other comment I just wanted to make is to give you feedback regarding the sod lane company. I had just replaced all my sod the year before this happened. Oh, no. Actually, the summer before we were uh, notified that it hap was going to happen. And so I had brand new sod that I was taking care of, and then they came and dumped all their dirt on top of it. And of course, they replaced it all. And the sod quality is good, but the lane quality stinks. And if mm -hmm. I had hired the company, they would have had to redo it. Mm -hmm. um, I can't mow decently now because I have peaks and valleys in there. So when you mow, you shave half of it off, and the other half stays long because there's holes. So I'm going to obviously fix that myself sometime, but just wanted to give you that feedback that um, I wasn't very satisfied with that um, whole prospect of it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Along the same lines, I guess I got a question for Steve. Mine's coming up later, but anyway, the sod <laughs> issue. <laughs> we had the same thing on Franklin Street. What did they ever do? I know that in the spring they went in and they took some out and replaced mm -hmm. some, but... Uh, Mr. President, sodding is always a difficult um, process. Uh, the way the contract language is generally written is the contractor comes in in a window of time, generally from June <coughs> to you know September, growing season, and they have 30 days to water it and grow it. And typically what happens is you get some really hot days and things start to burn or um, you get wet days and it grows really well. So it's kind of out of the hand of the contractor. So in order to kind of mitigate some of those issues, we've added some watering hours when the contract is, o is past the 30-day maintenance period. Rather than extending the maintenance period, we have the ability to, to uh, call the contractor up and say, hey, come water it and we'll pay you for it. So that mm -hmm. seems to work a little better. I think your particular roadway was kind of in the middle of that. I could discuss it with my assistant. He might remember it a little bit more. But generally, they, they have 30 days to make it grow, and then it, it reverts to the homeowner as far as maintenance. And we usually send a letter to everyone <coughs> uh, stating that, please water your sod because it's, you know, the maintenance period is over. So we'd have to look into any sp specific uh, circumstances, but that's the general um, process with regard to sodding. The watering wasn't a problem. Okay. It was yep. shoddy work. I mean, there was uneven humps yep. in it all over. Well, I believe that they That's came back. They about. came back and did some. Um, with regard to 12th North, um, 
that particular segment of, of roadway is between Broadway and, and State Street, and there was a sanitary sewer main that could no longer even be maintained. It was blocked in several locations, and we simply had to get in there and replace that. If the sewer would have backed up into this person's basement, I think it would have been a uh, worse situation than sod not growing, but mm -hmm. we could take a look at the sod if you'd like us to and see if there's anything we do. Obviously, it's not under warranty anymore. No. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I think we just need to have our inspectors kind of yep. watch it a little bit closer because I, I don't should have never yep. even got left that way. Yeah, I don't disagree. Sometimes what happens is the contractor's supposed to have a superintendent on site and he doesn't. And a subcontractor comes to town and our guys are busy someplace else and things get away from us occasionally but we can we can try and buckle down on that a little bit okay anybody else from 12 north mm -hmm. name and address for the record please richard pustle i live at 611 12 north i didn't have the problem that mary did but that's maybe because i did some leveling and stuff of my own on the mm -hmm. boulevard before they put the sod down but my act actually my question was why didn't they do the end services uh, we typically don't do the end services when it's a main reconstruct if we don't if we're not taking out the curb and gutter in that case the curb and gutter was in very good shape it wasn't a total reconstruct with replacement of the curb and gutter so we would have replaced them to the trench wall you know, we could have worked with you if you would have wanted to, but we would have had to especially assess a little bit more on that kind of work because then you have to take out the curb and gutter, get into sidewalks and boulevard areas. Okay. So kind of depends on what needs to be done and what condition everything is in. I was a little surprised at the assessment, too, because you had told us it was going to be about $1,800. Uh, Mr. Fossil, I, I don't recall that. I have the engineer's report, and it, it discusses three hundred or three thousand uh, dollars. The eighteen hundred dollars is if you're on a corner. In particular, there's there's two parcels on State Street. Yeah. They have a front yard on State Street, and they were assessed the full benefit on a previous project on w on one of the parcels. So we assign a sixty percent side yard calculation on the other side, so that if you live in the corner, you're not penalized with two front yard calculations oh, okay. so 60% of 3,000 is the 1800 I don't right. know if that's what you heard yeah yeah that probably is so. okay thank you thank you sure. Anybody Any other else? concerns from other sod folk did you get any other ones mr. Kaler uh, I have not gotten anything this was a you know from 2014 so by now most of those issues hopefully were worked out I know there every year you have issues with uh, maintenance of the sod and boulevards it's just this kind of a lot of issues back when this was finished up because I know in this from 6th to on Franklin the 10th I don't know how many people have come and talked to me about that one and then I know I related to the assistant mm -hmm. stuff and that's why I think they came back and did some touch up yeah. but I know we had a pretty good punch list on sod related items in that particular mm -hmm. area did we bid that out different sod companies or no we, we bid the project out to a general contractor and then they they, us, they get a subcontractor who typically is works okay. for the lowest cost and just for your information I, when they laid that sod it was two very young boys that looked very inexperienced to me and even as they were laying it I should have probably gone out but I was in a hurry coming and going from work when I noticed it happening and yeah it's I just kind of figured they were probably college kids, had a summer job, not much training, yeah. you know, and I just thought for a city to hire someone, you would think that they would have a little bit better quality of workmanship than they had. And leveling was the main thing. If they would have leveled it better, you know, I could have gotten it to grow. I mean, it's still, the grass itself looks good. The quality of the sod was good that they did use, yeah. but they put it in in little chunks all over, and then I have peaks and valleys. Mm. So. You'd have some uh, authority to work on that subcontract language, wouldn't you, in future sod thing contracts? Uh, we wouldn't work on the subcontract language. We would work on the specifications for the, con the, for the uh, sodding itself, and then the general contractor's responsible for it. Yeah. Maybe a little stronger language. And, in yeah, and we have worked on that. But bear in mind, the, the more difficult you make it, the more expensive it gets. Sure. And 
okay. assessments will increase, but we can certainly work on that. Okay. I think we need to try to get it back as nice as what it was when the, mm -hmm. before we started, if it's all possible. I don't disagree. So. Yep. All right. Number four, Garden Street from Center Street to 8 South Street. Five is 8 South Street to Garden Street to Payne Street. Six is uh, Alley Block 116 North of Center Street. Eight is Alley Block 104 North or South of Center Street. <coughs> and number nine is Alley Block 116 South of Center Street. And then we got number 10, Sarah Hills, third edition. You know more? Mr. President, I, I would make one comment on Sarah Hills. We uh, calculated the special assessment rules. There's one particular par property owner that owns, I believe, 10 of those lots, Rich? And they I think came, it's eight. they came out, oh, you has eight of them? Yeah, eight of them. And he, it came out to about $26,000 per parcel. And he would like to prepay $10,000 per lot. So when we recertify it, when we certify these, uh, to the county, if they're approved by the council, we'll deduct that ten thousand. Reg will deposit the check in the appropriate account. You want that as part of the motion? Uh, I mean, it's entirely up to you. I just want you to be aware of it. It's, okay. it's going to happen administratively because okay. right now we don't have the check, mm -hmm. and so we don't do right. anything until we get the yeah. check. Mm -hmm. Got to have the money. Mm -hmm. Or pennies, or oh. <laughs> dollar bills, uh -huh. whichever he wishes to bring in. So. Okay, no more discussion. Entertain a motion to close the public hearing and approve the resolution. I'll offer the motion closing the public hearing and offering the resolution to waive the reading and to adopt the final assessment rules for 2014 for a group one project. I'll second that. We got a motion and a second to waive the reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none, finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Webster? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 3A, number one, consider a resolution approving a petition from Philip Rondru, Chief Manager of Minnesota Real Estate Services, LLC, doing business as State Street Apartments, LLC, to amend the city's comprehensive plan to allow high density residential land use in place of a public semi public. Land use oh, at 15 North Minnesota Street. State Mr. Street. President, before oh, we straight, start, State Street. Oh. Sorry about that. Oh. Before we start discussion on this, just a disclosure on my end that I've done in the past uh, for this item and the next item, is there was a member of Senate that did own this building. Uh, we have voted to dissolve, and there was never a financial investor in that property. Um, so I don't believe there's a conflict anymore, but I just want to disclose that for the purposes of this next two items. Mm -hmm. Anything on that? Right. Well, Mr. President, yeah. City Council members, uh, as, you, as you notice that the, following the public hearing, the Planning Commission uh, unanimously recommended approval at their October 29th, 2015 meeting. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think we all know uh, where 15 North State Street is uh, currently. Uh, housing the school district 88 offices and, and other facilities that are there. Uh, the <coughs> materials pertaining to the uh, comprehensive plan, the issues that were brought before the Planning Commission, and uh, I would anticipate that the, you know, there's no budgetary items at this point in time, so we're just talking about a change in use of that facility in order to redevelop it for uh, a different purpose that it was originally mm -hmm. I think constructed for and or used for. Mm -hmm. And I should note, Phil is here if we want him to speak. He said he'd mm -hmm. give us a few minutes if we have some questions for him. Or I'd maybe like to hear what from him what's going on. Mm -hmm. If sure. he wants to come up Got and speak. Yep. Name and address just for the record. Uh, good evening. I'm uh, Philip Rondo. Um, my address is uh, 24036 167th Street in Big Lake, Minnesota. Um, I, I guess I'll answer questions. Uh, in a 30,000 foot version, uh, we're planning 57 units of market rate apartments uh, in the school. 
Uh, right now, the design uh, from the exterior of the building uh, will not change. Um, we, the building, as you probably already know, is on the National Historic Register already. Um, we have been approved for uh, historic tax credits uh, on the project uh, we, with part one of the three-part approval process. Uh, we are currently uh, finalizing construction plans for that. Our intent is to uh, start uh, with some of the removal of the interior items uh, later this fall yet. And uh, most of the construction you won't see because it is all on the inside of the building. The only uh, new construction would be uh, the actual parking garage, which will be in the existing parking lot on the Washington side, where I guess there was, there was a school there before I forget the name of it. Emerson. Emerson. Emerson School, yeah. So there will be a new uh, parking garage there. Uh, we will also be creating two small parking lots on the State Street side, which I guess I'll call the Northwest and Northeast corners, uh, in order to satisfy the parking requirements for the project. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the most part, uh, the building as you see it today uh, from an exterior standpoint will remain unchanged. Uh, just some minor tuck pointing and some repair of the existing materials is all we're planning for that. Uh, so Mr. I've President. Any questions you might have? I'm, uh, yes, it has to do with the uh, parking situation. Mm -hmm. I'd appreciate it if you could uh, describe the uh, parking garage that you have in mind. I mean, is it a, you know, a four-story uh, uh uh, something that you drive up in or is it uh, single car garages or would you describe uh, in more detail what you have in mind when you say there will be a parking garage yep. Uh, sure yep absolutely uh, it is just uh, a one-story um, slab on grade I guess is what I'll call it so we'll basically be utilizing as much as we can the existing elevations that are out there mm -hmm. uh, but it is only one story tall. Um, there's 48 stalls uh, in that actual garage. And the exterior materials, we are going to try to match the existing <coughs> school materials as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Understanding that the materials may not exist anymore, but we're gonna do the best we can to try and mm -hmm. match that. Uh, so it's a one story mm -hmm. uh, structure that will have uh, 48 uh, stalls. Mm -hmm. Now, is that going to be 48 separate uh, garage door openers or just uh, you a person would enter uh, and then find her yep. assigned stall? Correct. Right. One, one in and one out. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, this right. will, there will not be separate doors for each stall. Mm -hmm. no. okay. And then, uh, there, uh, Mr. President, you know, there's been uh, some talk about uh, what the uh, limits are uh, b given the uh, historic uh, designation. Um, and I know you have told us that, uh, that the exterior cannot change it. Are there any limits to uh, what can happen on the interior? Uh, yes, uh, and actually we've actually gone through a, a redesign on the inside already. Uh, we actually had two representatives from the State Historical Preservation Office come down and actually do a walkthrough of the building with us. Um, one of their concerns was uh, trying to leave the hallways even um, in existing. Um, mm -hmm. Our intent originally was um, from a financial performance standpoint, obviously hallways are common areas and they're non-revenue generating space, so we try to minimize those. But um, at their request, we've actually uh, utilized the, the existing hallways the way they are, and they will remain the same, both size-wise and material-wise. Another request that they had was um, <coughs> to try to salvage as many of the, what I'll call the demising walls between the existing classrooms. Um, we did do that. We, we took a look at uh, the original design we had. Um, we were able to salvage probably about 95% of those. Uh, it did result in a reduction of mm -hmm. two of the units, but we felt that uh, if that was something that was very important to SHPO, it just made sense, and mm -hmm. it wasn't a huge financial burden for us to mm -hmm. reduce those two units down. So, so there were a number of uh, restrictions that they, I don't want to say restrictions, they were more of uh, a wish list or requests from SHPO mm -hmm to try and save as much as we could inside. And so we, we did take that into consideration and we're on our second design now with that. Mm -hmm. And just one more question, what about flooring? Uh, most of it's gonna stay in place. Mm -hmm. um, we have, uh, with the different additions that were put on, for example, the 1955 edition has a lot of uh, VCT 
Uh, there are, which is vinyl composite tile. Okay. Uh, a lot of uh, the people that have looked at it uh, remember it as the alphabet floor in the, in the old kindergarten area. Mm -hmm. um, and so those, uh, those may not have historic value, but they have kind of a cultural value, I guess, in town. And a lot of people have uh, actually remembered the letter that they sat on in mm -hmm. kindergarten. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, our intention is to actually salvage that. Uh, and most of the wood flooring in a lot of the other areas will actually remain in place. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The biggest question I hear is, are you taking, gonna take pets? Are we gonna take what? Pets. pets. Haven't determined that yet. <laughs> um, it, it is not an age restricted, it is market rate apartments is what we're putting in, so it's not income or age uh, restricted at this point in time. Uh, based on the information we got from the latest uh, market study that was performed by the city, we didn't feel a need to try and do that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you. Anybody else? How many parking stalls would you have in the front of the building on the property? Between there are, lots? I believe there's roughly a total of about 90 stalls, I believe, uh, when you take in the parking garage and the two small parking lots on the two corners. Okay. Uh, I believe the city requires one and a half stalls per unit, and we're considerably in excess of that requirement. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I do have a little bit of a site plan. If, if after the meeting, if you folks want to take a look at the site plan, I'd be more than happy to share that with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank I, I just you very have much one for other, I, oh. forgive me, I just have one sure. other question. Sure. I apologize. One more. One more, one more, <laughs> one, more, right. one more. Now, you're the chief manager of Centrosota Real Estate Services. Correct. Um, yeah. I was, uh, can you, maybe you've given us this information before, uh, but can you tell me what other experience um, this uh, entity is, this particular entity has had in doing this type of project? Uh, Centrosota itself has been involved in, I'm going to give you a list here, but it's probably about a dozen or so what I'll call multifamily projects uh, involved in different capacities where we have been predominantly the contractor and or consultant for the projects. Mm -hmm. This will actually be the first project where we will be the actual developer of it. Mm -hmm. But we have probably over the last 15 years, we've done about a, about a dozen projects, any, ranging from about 25 units up to 100 units. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, and I could certainly provide you with a list if that's what you wanted to do for experience on that, but yeah. our capacity to date, again, has been the actual general contractor, building mm -hmm. them, and then acting as a consultant on some of them as well, where other generals have built them. Thank you all very much. Thank for your you. Time. Thank you. Any more questions or concerns? If not, entertain a resolution. I'll offer the motion to uh, approve the petition from Philip Rondu, Chief Manager of Central Soda Real Estate, LLC. That's a resolution, I'll, and I'll second that. Mm -hmm. We got a motion and a second to adopt the resolution. Waived reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none. Finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher. Yes. Councilor Mack. Yes. Councilor Schultz. Yes. Councilor Webster. Yes. President Schmitz. Yes. Motion carries. Item two A, number two. Consider motion approving the petition from Philip Rondu, Chief Manager of Cent Centra Soda Real Estate Services LLC, doing business as State Street Apartments LLC to rezone the property at 15 North Minnesota Street from R2 single family <coughs> residence to R3 multifamily residence. Mm -hmm. What I can add from the planning commission meeting, uh, we had a couple of neighbors that voiced a few concerns and you know, one of them was first was the parking, which, you know, um, Philip, you know, said they're gonna have enough parking on site. Um, uh, and one of the other neighbors uh, was concerned uh, when it was uh, zoned single and two family, and Dave Schnobrick answered that question. It was in the 60s, and you know everybody was in favor of the project, mm -hmm. uh, for as far as the neighbors and the, the planning commission. And uh, I may add, uh, one of the neighbors was concerned whether 
it'd be creating a lot of dust or activity with the construction, but Philip, you know, said majority of the construction is going to be the interior of the building. Nice. You know, there will be some with a parking garage, but, you know, so we recommended approval. Okay. Anybody else? See a minute, entertain a motion. I'll offer <coughs> the, the petition to approve. I'll second. We got a motion and a second to approve the petition. Any more discussion? See a minute. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 3B consider rep recommendation from the Reinvest Norm Committee to consider a half cent sales tax reauthorization for in 2016 and direct staff and committee to prepare a recommendation and timeline for the 2000 or for the November 2016 general election. Mr. Mr. <coughs> Mr. President, City Councilors, uh, uh, the uh, loss committee changed their uh, <laughs> name upon <laughs> unanimous vote to uh, reinvest in the Ulm, uh, committee. Uh, uh, part of the discussion at the last meeting was to recommend to the City Council that uh, the, the, the Council authorize staff to, you know, kind of prepare and, and shoot for the November 2016 on general election. Mm -hmm. As you're probably well aware, we can only have this put on the ballot in a November general election, so that's 2016 or 2018. The uh, November of 2020 uh, would be too late uh, to get the uh, sales tax reauthorized without having to wait a year mm -hmm. to go through the process. So the, uh, the, the committee felt that uh, no matter how that this is structured, if you were to say uh, we hold the election in 2016, we go to the legislature, we've got four opportunities to go to the legislature after 2016, so we got 2017, 18, 19, and 20, uh, to uh, get reauthorization. And uh, if, if we took it to the 2016 election and it didn't pass, that things could be modified and they could try again in 2018 to get it past the city council, in which case you'd have uh, 2019 and 2020 to go to the legislature. So the, uh, the concept is, is, is to shoot for the 2016 general election uh, to play it safe but the final decision about when the reauthorization would actually start and occur and what projects would be built, that, uh, you know, that the, the committee hasn't gone that far. Uh, we'll be coming to the council with something probably in the uh, May, June, mm -hmm. July area because it has to be approved by August into the county for the language for the ballot. So mm -hmm. there's a timeline. Uh, it's, in, it's included in your, your packet as to uh, the two the two tracks, the 2016 or the 2018 track. And I think the, uh, the committee is just saying we'd rather uh, try for 2016, and if we don't make it, that's fine, but we'd rather try for 2016 and play it safe, and uh, uh, then we've got uh, four years in case the legislature decides they don't want to do things like this or like this year. Uh, Due to the remodeling in the capital, the legislative session is going to be six weeks long, approximately, and they're just not going to have a lot of time to do a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so this year doesn't look good for, you know, if we were to go in for a sales tax, a reauthorization, it probably wouldn't look good because they're just going to be busy on, on the big stuff that, you know, we don't know until we actually do it. So the concept, I guess, is, is to try for 2016 general election. Uh, to, to get the voters to approve that, and then in 2017, 18, uh, 19, or, or 20, uh, get approval from the legislature, and then get on with the with the projects uh, that, that have been selected. But again, I'm just reiterating, we haven't even solicited the projects yet. We're hoping to do that in January, February, and March, and then do the analysis on you mm -hmm. know uh, the projects that we believe are, are good for the community. And then we'll bring that to the city council for review. And but the, the timeline is uh, it's doable, and it probably gives the the city and all the most flexibility. And if if you don't get it the first time, you can change it, modify it, and try for the second election. Mm -hmm. 
I know we have Councillor Mack on that committee. What's, I, I guess I'm really concerned about that timeline. You're basically seven months, no, it would be eight months to get this project ready to go. I'm nervous. It's aggressive, <laughs> but we've got to have our ducks in a row, and I guess bottom line is if we feel by, you know, June, if we're not there, then, then we'll take time. But right now we're committed to try to meet two times a month okay. and, uh, you know, put the most effort into each meeting and, and move forward. Yeah, I know you got really excellent committee members that are working hard on this. Correct. And, and they all have the same ultimate end goal, but it's it's an aggressive timeline for sure. So uh, with that, I'll make the motion to approve this <coughs> recommendation. I'll second that. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? I just have what? a question. Um, I noticed in the uh, agenda for the renew committee uh, that uh, uh, you're expecting uh, Senator Doms and uh, Representative Torkelson. Is their um, presence been confirmed? Are you expecting them this evening? I uh, tried to verify that they were going to be showing up this evening, and uh, we were assured that <coughs> our meeting was on their calendar. Oh. And that's about as good as <laughs> it was. <Yeah>. All, right. <laughs> All right. They're aware of it. All right. Uh, so we'll see if they can make it. All right. And my only comment to say, I appreciate what you said, Councilor Mack, that if you're not ready to go, you need to pull back, because I think that's critical right. that we do this and we do it right. And if we're ready to go, let's go. But if we're not, I'd, I'd rather not rush it through and, 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 and not do it proper, appropriately. That's why we're taking a couple steps, yep. and then we're making yep. a short order application form, which will be, we direct the staff to start writing, okay. and then we'll have the long form. But you know, <laughs> if we can get some ideas out there to get the people's input, and then they get a taste of what, what it's going to take to get involved mm -hmm. to present their project and then, uh, you know, in, a, in like a two-phase, you know, mm -hmm. short form and then the long form. And, and yeah, I think this might there. be a little bit different than, than maybe what happened last time in the mm -hmm. fact that this is going to be more, more citizen-driven, that, that a group of people who want a project to be considered for local option sales tax they actually have to explain what the benefit's going to be to the community, mm -hmm. what the budget will be, how the money will be spent, what's the, what is the payback <coughs> to the community. Is it regional of value or is it just mm -hmm. you know, a small group of people thinking this is a great project? They have to do all of that, and the community is going to you know, accept all those and, and prioritize and mm -hmm. rank and, and do all that work. So it's going to be an interesting mm -hmm. process, but mm -hmm. some of the work will be on the will be the responsibility of the group that wants to submit something for consideration mm -hmm. uh, they might need some help from staff to kind of you know guide them and how do you get estimates of project costs and things like that but but it will be uh, uh, the information is coming from the residents themselves or from groups of people mm -hmm. not from a committee just sitting around saying what, what do we think is the best thing for the community mm -hmm. it should be driven by the citizens mm -hmm. And I just have to say um, that I ag also agree with the, um, the sped up timeline at 2016. I want to see us be aggressive and sometimes these things seem to drag out and take so long and I think mm -hmm. people like to see action and keep things moving but I also agree with what Councilor Schultz said that you know we have to have the wherewithal to if, if we're not there mm -hmm. and not have all the information to be able to pull back and mm -hmm. so you are also considering the reauthorization of, in other words, what year we're going to end the present one and when we're going to start the new one? Correct. Whether it that all be part of it. Correct. Whether it be 2018 or 2020. It's just, we have to, we don't even know what projects. <coughs> right, mm -hmm. right. And, you know. Okay. Any more questions? Concerns? Do we have a? Yep, we had a motion and a second. Okay. Yep. Still talking. Okay, any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 4A, consider a motion to receive a memorandum from Matthew Schneckenberg. 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 <laughs> Public Finance Manager <laughs> Incorporated on <laughs> amount of tax increment financing required for ah. T uh, TIF District R9 and district staff to proceed with a modification to the development agreement with Minnesota Strauss LLC for the construction of an apartment building at 103 to 123 South Minnesota Street. Brian? Mr. President, City Councilors, at the last meeting, uh, you directed staff to work uh, with the developer 
of this project to be able to come up with a number that would fit into the, the, the development agreement as, as to how much tax increment would be made available uh, for this project. The underlying uh, issue here is that the developer needs to tell us what that number is, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, you know we could we could make some assumptions, but it's you know uh, it's it's uh, we want to be fairly accurate. We just can't say you know three hundred thousand dollars for twenty five years at two percent interest rate. You know that that note that the developer is, is uh, <coughs> trying to acquire. That's something he negotiates with his financial. Uh, lending institution and so those terms we don't have so what we've <coughs> asked is that the the uh, the numbers be placed into that agreement ref that reflect whatever the principal and the interest is for the time period for that note and as soon as we get that number from the developer we'll insert it in uh, and, and I can't come up with that number and, and the developer if he hasn't gone to the bank and negotiated that out yet he can't give me that number yet either mm -hmm. but what, what we heard from the city council was that we would authorize an, you know, as enough TIF, tax increment financing funds, to cover that note. No more, no less. Mm -hmm. So whatever number he gives us, if he says that's, that's with principal and interest, it's uh, $1.9 million, that's the number. If that's what it takes to pay that note off. You know, it won't be $2 million, it won't be one point eight. It'll be whatever it takes, principal and interest, to make that note whole, mm -hmm. so that's what we would uh, propose to put in there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that and that's the recommendation, uh, you know, that uh, Mr. Schnackenberg, you know, put together and basically says, as soon as you get that number, I can mm -hmm. tell you what that, you know, I can well, tell you what to put in that in that slot. And the preliminary indications are uh, that the uh, the developer will be borrowing approximately nine hundred thousand dollars. That's what I understand. Right. Yes. Um, so if you know, literally, like I said, if we, if we knew that he's going to borrow nine hundred thousand dollars at five percent interest rate for twenty five years, that's just a mathematical calculation. Mm -hmm. You can come up with <laughs> with what it takes to pay that back. Mm -hmm. But since the city's not privy to that negotiation, we don't know what that interest rate's going to be, and we don't know what that twenty five years or twenty years or whatever that that magical. Uh, date for the note is that's something that that has to come from from the developer and their in their finance uh, area mm -hmm. so I think we've come to terms <coughs> right uh, the uh, developer is here if he's got any you know uh, questions or comments that he wants to make a you know obviously the he's been to the podium once or twice before and mm -hmm. uh, but I think we're in agreement that we're following what the City Council basically said you know we were to do so it just takes one more step, and we'll, we'll we're pretty close to it. It's just that mm -hmm. there's certain things the developer has to okay. do yet. So, Mr. Kretsch, is there anything you do want to add, or no? Jim Kretsch, uh, Cortland. No, it's um, pretty much like the, mm -hmm. the development agreement started out at with the 4.7 number in that section, and. Uh, it's a learning process. We could have done it a little smoother than we have, but um, the bank and, and your consultant have started the process. So mm -hmm. I'm just kind of sitting on the sidelines waiting for them to conclude it. So, okay. And it depends pretty much on what you do here tonight. Mm -hmm. We're going to get it done. I'm going <coughs> to offer the motion. I'm going to second that. Right. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Item 5A, first reading of ordinance number 15-004, fifth series amending section 5.5 .5 of the city code, city of New Ulm relative to liquor license and regulations. Roger. <coughs> Anything? Uh, ordinance number 15-004, fifth series, city of New Ulm, Brown County, Minnesota. An ordinance amending section 5.50 the city code of the city of New Ulm. To be ordained by the city council of the city of New Ulm, section 1, that section 5.50 the city code of the city of New Ulm is hereby amended to add the following subdivision. Subdivision 4, athletic events at the New Ulm Civic Center. 
The City Council may grant a permit to a holder of an on-sale intoxicating liquor license issued by the City to dispense intoxicating <coughs> liquor at a public athletic event or series of public athletic events located at the New Ulm Civic Center. Notwithstanding the provisions of Section 5.50 Subdivision 3A, the City Council may grant one such permit to cover an entire season of athletic events of a sports team that is least space to conduct its athletic events at the Civic Center. B, the licensee must be engaged to dispense intoxicating liquor at an athletic event or a series of athletic events held by a person or organization that has a signed agreement to use the Civic Center to host its athletic events. C, the licensee may dispense intoxicating liquor only to individuals attending the athletic event. D, any such permit that is issued under this section shall take effect at 12.01 a.m. on July 1 and shall expire at midnight of the following June 30 unless a different period is authorized by the City Council in its approval. But in no event shall a permit be issued for a period longer than one year. The permit shall be conspicuously posted in the licensed premises during the entire permit period. Mm -hmm. E, any such permit granted here under is subject to revocation or suspension pursuant to City Code Section 5.06. F, sufficient security personnel shall be on duty during all times that alcoholic beverages are sold or dispensed under any such permit. The permit holder may supply its own security personnel. The proposed permit holder must submit a plan for security at its events along with its permit application, and such plan must be approved by the Chief of Police and the City Council prior to the issuance of a permit. G, the proposed permit holder shall submit certificates of insurance as set forth in uh, 5.50 subdivision 3G. The proposed permit holder may submit one certificate of insurance to cover the whole season or a series of athletic events. Any such certificate must be submitted at least 30 days prior to the first event covered by the permit. Any changes <coughs> in insurance that occur during the duration of the permit must be brought to the attention of the city within 24 hours of the change and in no event later than the beginning of the next scheduled event covered by the permit. H, the city council may impose additional requirements or conditions on the granting of a permit as it deems reasonable and appropriate. I, all other non-inconsistent provisions of 5.50 subdivision 3 above apply to a permit issued under this subdivision. Mm -hmm. uh, section 2. At Section 5.50, Subdivision 3 of the City Code of the City of New Ulm is hereby amended to read as follows. Subdivision 3, Alcoholic Beverages at City-Owned Facilities and Parks for Public Events. H, Law Enforcement Officers, except for sales made pursuant to a permit issued under the provisions of 5.50, Subdivision 4 below. Uh, such number of law enforcement officers as the Chief of Police may require or such other or other security personnel as approved by the chief of police shall be on duty at the event during all times that alcoholic beverages are sold or dispensed. The sponsoring individual or organization shall be responsible for securing and compensating such law enforcement officers or approved security personnel at the prevailing rates. Mm -hmm. uh, section 3, the subdivision 5.50 of the city code of the city of New Orleans is hereby amended uh, to be renumbered as follows. Um, Subdivision 4, uh, exception that this ordinance shall take effect and be enforced 30 days from and after its adoption, approval, and publication adopted by the City Council of the City of New Orleans this blank day of blank 2015. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so um, now the permit holder will also have to have an actual liquor license, right? No. No, okay. They would um, be allowed to engage with a licensee, an existing okay. licensee. Okay, okay. Um, but the um, so the, um, liquor can be dispensed only while events are taking place, Correct. Uh, and only to people who are in attendance. Correct. And the uh, as to security. Um, the permit holder needs to have a plan and that plan needs to be approved. Yes, I think the distinction here, the existing provisions in the code for events on city property required um, the applicant to make arrangements to have licensed officers on site. Right. The proponents of uh, leasing the Civic Center for the hockey team <coughs> wanted to arrange for their own security 
and this allows the council and the chief to have some input into mm -hmm. determining your satisfaction level with what those arrangements are. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any more concern? No, just Question. first reading. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, item 5B, first reading ordinance number 15-005, fifth series, amending section 9.20 of the city code. City of New Ulm relative to heritage <coughs> preservation landmarks. May I offer a motion to waive the reading of this as it simply is just a adding the National Guard Armory as a her heritage preservation landmark. It's, I don't know if we need to read the whole thing. Okay. If, I, if no. everybody's okay with that. I second. <laughs> and it's not a real long one, but no. it, uh, I think right. we can. Oh, we're getting there. We got a motion and a second. Did All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. We'll go on to item 5C, first reading of ordinance number 15-006, fifth series amending section 2.99 of the city code, city of New Ulm relative to schedule of city fees. I'm going to offer the same motion here, maybe just have city staff or talk about what the major the two fees that are, are recommended for changes. Right, the actual Roger ordinance Yalmi. just changes the year yeah, uh, mr president the council fees. members the staff has has gone through, every department has gone through their own fees they've looked at them they've tried to make a determination as to appropriateness uh, and, and what i mean by that is uh, photocopies can't cost ten dollars a page they <laughs> have to be close to what it costs to make a photocopy uh, so we've gone through that uh, uh, process the items that you see highlighted uh, in blue uh, we've got some cemetery uh, fees and charges that uh, that have been changed. Uh, you know, the the costs uh, have been adjusted. You know, for for those and it'd be your grave openings and things like that. So we've looked at that, uh, and then others would be the you know construction and development fees. You'll notice. It's actually on page 81, which is reflecting uh, just a, a, a large variety of uh, items there. The, the <coughs> fixed fee uh, has been changed, and as well as uh, you know, all the way down to you know what a variance might cost. Just and that's just uh, taking into account the uh, you know the paperwork process, the the wages, the labor involved in getting those items processed through the various boards. The largest, uh, you know, fee that uh, that we have in that particular area, obviously, is that seven thousand uh, dollar TIF establishing fee, and that's mm -hmm. that's twenty five years of paperwork when we enter into one of these, you know, like in a housing TIF. So right. it, uh, that's to cover those costs. Mm -hmm. So other than that, uh, those are probably the biggest categories where we saw. Any changes? So we don't. Excuse me. We don't know what the fee was before, like on that seven thousand. What was it before? We just have what was it's it changed to. Six. Six thousand. Mr. Chair, I know this is the first reading of this ordinance, so I just want to make a, a comment. I know on the first page there's a miscellaneous um, license fee, and one of them happens to be daycare inspection fees of $50. It's not a very big fee. <coughs> but we have a really serious daycare issue in our community, and not only in our community, in our county, and in our state. And it's at a crisis stage where business owners are, can't get people to come back to work after kid, they have, uh, their employee has had a child. Um, there's a little bit of an underfoot of trying to put together a committee to address this issue. Um, they want to try and remove as many barriers as possible so we can get new daycares to open or current daycare centers to expand. Um, so we haven't even had our official first meeting yet, but when I saw that, I'm like, well, maybe there's one little tiny piece, and it's not very much of a big revenue, but I'd like us as counselors to think about either waiving. I know that it takes time for our inspectors to get out there, but if we can get rid of as many barriers as possible so we can, we need desperately need daycare in our community. Um, our businesses need it, so there might be some joint ventures there, but let's think about that before we approve the final fees for next time. Well, and perhaps uh, at yeah. our next meeting we can 
uh, have uh, staff talk about what how much time, you know, that, how much takes time that takes and how often it has to be done and that's yeah. sure. I'd like to know a little more about that. I just happened to run and saw that this morning. So, any other? So I offered a motion to a waive the reading for that. So I don't know if we sec anybody seconded that. Second. Yet. Okay. Got a motion, second, waived reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item. <laughs> 5D, consider a motion approving the lease agreement with Minnesota Music Hall of Fame for a five-year period under the terms and conditions as outlined in said agreement. So moved. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 6A, consider acceptance of the list of claims paid and approved the list to be paid. Claims paid in the amount of 10770000 $8,745 and approved the list of claims to be paid in the amount of $872,706.68. I'll move it. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Mr. President, I'll move uh, uh, to suspend the rules for action on two different addendum items, one of them being appointment of someone to the heritage preservation and secondly to talk about the closing of target second we got a motion and a second any more uh, no, we'll go on all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed no motion carries first one on a new business consider motion confirming the appointment of Kara Koff to the heritage preservation commission I'll I'll move it. second we got a motion and a second to approve it any discussion all in favor say aye Aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item number two, <coughs> target. Yes, um, thank you, Mr. President. I asked to have this put on the agenda tonight because I think we all heard yesterday devastating news in our community that the Target store is closing on January 30th. Um, loss of almost 100 employees, um, loss of a Target or an anchor store in our community. Um, I think I certainly was taken aback by this um, decision by the corporate office. Um, within a very short amount of time, 24 hours, about 11,000 people have joined the Save Target Facebook website, which is almost the amount of people in our, in our city. Um, certainly very um, wonderful corporate office that has some great jobs and a good store that we all um, enjoy. Um, I think as city councilors and as elected staff that we need to do, if there's any chance of, of saving that store, it's going to have to come from us. And we know corporate makes some pretty difficult rules and when they make their decisions they stand by them quite often. However, if we don't at least try, um, we know that we know what the end result is. So I would like to have that discussion here tonight if uh, people feel the same way that we could ask city staff to set up an emergency meeting with corp, uh, Target Corporate and several of our counselors and mayor. Um, I know the mayor's been inundated with phone calls and as well as we, the rest of us, but I wanted to see what, what the rest of us felt mm -hmm. or believed. Well, uh, Mr. President, bef before we uh, get into talking about no. what we possibly could do, I'd like to talk a little bit uh, um, about, the, about the process and the rules uh, that apply now, um, I, there, I confirmed uh, with the community development director that there's no state or federal rule or that requires uh, Target to give the city advance notice of this type of closure. And so uh, this came as much a, as a surprise to uh, uh, us as to anyone else in the community. We didn't, right. uh, we didn't have any advance notice of this and more importantly, there's no requirement of, a, of an advance notice. And the other thing, I, you know, is just talking in terms of process, um, as far as, um, uh, you know, working to save a business or uh, recruit a new business if the uh, existing business can't be saved. Essentially, uh, the city of New Ulm uh, has some uh, input, but we also uh, more or less contract with uh, the chamber and the you know, you know other entities. So I'd like to make sure that we, we talk a little bit about that because because we don't act alone 
uh, as uh, as uh, rec as recruiters of businesses. So I just want to, want to summarize if if the if we could if the city manager could please just summarize you know what what uh, the city uh, pays for economic development of this type and and who does it and so that people who are watching and listening understand what the city's role is. Okay, Mr. President, City Councilors, uh, as you're well aware, in, in <coughs> our budget, we've got a, a, an amount set aside for a retail uh, a specialist mm -hmm. that is employed by the Chamber of Commerce, and we provide the funding for that uh, as well as, uh, as uh, for industrial economic development through the EDC. We spend, uh, I believe, about $35,000 uh, for the retail specialist, which would apply to the you know, more retail commercial entities. Uh, in our community to uh, entice them to come to our community or find a better location for them in, in, in existing business in our own community. And with the EDC, we spent, uh, the city spends $50,000, which is our statutory cap. We can't spend any more th than that. And the uh, PUC spends approximately another forty-three or you know, $45,000. Mm -hmm. So what we give the EDC runs around almost $95,000. Mm -hmm. And what we give the Chamber of Commerce to deal with more retail-oriented business runs around $35,000. And uh, uh, we, we contract with the Chamber for, for that retail uh, activity. Uh, uh, we, we can't donate money to the Chamber, so, but we can contract. <coughs> for specific uh, work to be done for us. And one of those things that we've, we've asked, or the chamber asked us to fund is, is that retail specialist. And that person has been, uh, uh, it, that kind of morphed from, from you know, earlier positions that were more downtown, you know, promoting the business district uh, uh, to you know, probably over the last 10 or 12 years to what, what that position is today. So this is a new position that's, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, some of the old jobs, but much more uh, updated than, than mm -hmm. what, it, what it started out with about 10 years ago. So, uh, yes, we do contract with the uh, New Orleans Chamber of Commerce to provide uh, those duties. Uh, we contract with the EDC to provide industrial uh, uh, activities. And then when they bring somebody in, our community development director and the rest of the staff then uh, mm -hmm. see what we can do, you know, with our city loans and things like that. So the initial contact is, is historically uh, chamber for the retail and, and uh, the EDC for industrial. Mm -hmm. Now, some communities might have uh, the industrial part built right into their, into their city organization. Uh, I just saw a news article here in the last probably week where uh, a community had just had just hired a new uh, economic developer. Well, Noam chose <coughs> to have a separate entity, mm -hmm. a non-city employee perform that particular activity. And uh, I think that model was then mimicked by the chamber in, in doing the, the retail uh, specialist, that non-city employee that that the chamber is mm -hmm. probably the most likely a good spot for that person mm -hmm. to reside and be employed. So that's our, you Thank know, all total. Uh, you know, we're $140,000 we pay to two different entities to provide uh, retail and industrial economic development mm -hmm. services. I can tell you that I had a meeting with Ms. Knopf um, this afternoon, and her comment was she's all over this. Um, mm -hmm. She's tried her best to try and um, climb the target corporate ladder to try and find out more information about, you know, why we're closing. What um, is there anything we can do? She, it's boy, it's tough to get anywhere up through that corporate ladder. She's really having difficulty. On the other side, she's also taking a look at okay, if that does happen, what can mm -hmm. what can we start doing? What can we start looking at? So she's already got Plan A and Plan B. So she's, I've been pretty impressed with uh, Miss Knopf and her her abilities in this area. Um, but I still would like to try and see us um, ask city staff to try, and maybe we involve them in that meeting, so I don't know. And, and I think uh, one of the things I guess to kind of keep in mind, uh, you, know, uh, you know, most of the city council are, you know, are if not lifelong residents, you've been, you know, in the city a long <laughs> <Okay>. time. <laughs> uh, you know, the Alternative Learning Center used to be a, something before it is what it is now. 
the runnings, I believe, has moved four times in this community into a bigger facility, and, and, mm -hmm. and, and their ex buildings change. So the community is always changing, you know, even from small businesses, you know, going out of business or morphing into bigger. Uh, so, you know, sometimes you, we lose track of maybe when one door closes, another one might open. Mm -hmm. You know, it might be six months or two years later, but something will happen there. Uh, and uh, so, you know, although we probably hate to see, you know, Target leave, uh, I'm kind of an optimist in these things, and that oh, will, that really. building will be used. Mm -hmm. It will not, mm -hmm. you know, sit empty. Somebody will see an opportunity, and it will be, in all likelihood, something that New Ulm, you know, would like to have. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's the the chamber's job is you know that retail specialist. Mm -hmm. That's their opportunity yes, to agree. Mm -hmm. perform the activity that we contract for. But I think before so we get to having to try and find something to right. fill that area, um, I want to make darn sure that we've exhausted all opportunities mm -hmm. to save Target. Mm -hmm. So, um, so specifically, you're asking that uh, staff work. Uh, with Ms. Knopf to make an effort to uh, contact Target and make sure we understand uh, if this uh, uh, can be changed or if there's, there's any any potential options for is it to keep that store open I don't know what that is but we don't know if we don't ask I, I would just put out there that uh, staff will will pursue any direction the City Council wishes us to go but I would uh, probably have all correspondence and maybe the important telephone calls uh, uh, done by the, the mayor of New Ulm ah. because uh, to be quite honest I think uh, you know when they say the mayor of New Ulm's on the phone that's different than the city manager and I think <laughs> that we need if you're going to pursue yeah. this action yep. that's the most I think <coughs> the most uh, leverage that we can do is, is to utilize <coughs> the, uh, the the mayor's office in that. Yep. I agree, and I was, I was thinking if we need to have a contingency to head up there, the mayor should be driving the van. Uh -huh. yeah. so. Well, maybe the mayor should be the passenger in driving the van. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a professional <coughs> driving there van. There you go, professional we'll driving. Make we'll sure we get there. We'll, we'll see what, what we can, you know, what we can do, mm -hmm. uh, see who we can contact, yeah. and then, uh, you, know, you, know, uh, you know, the mayor and staff will you know, work together and see what can get put together. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we may we find... We do the best we can. We might hit blocked yeah. walls, but yeah. at least we can't say we didn't try. Mm -hmm. We'll we just open the door. Just doors. for the council's... Uh, I'm going to use a big word. <laughs> edification. Uh, Ooh. I have oh, been... Very I ha nice. Yeah. This is why we call on the mayor. <laughs> I have been on the phone. I've been on, the, on uh, uh, sending emails from uh, the governor to several other people... Uh, of that I think we're are pretty powerful people and um, hopefully I'm using the correct language to uh, get them to like what I'm talking about so um, we're starting but I, I do love the citizens of New Ulm because 11,000 <laughs> 95% yeah. or better of the people were always positive there's always some that uh, you know uh, using an old old phrase would complain if you got hung with a new rope so uh, uh -huh. <laughs> some people you can't please and I understand that it's a hard time for me but I, I do understand that but um, we're, we're yes the mayor is out there working already right mm -hmm. so do we need a motion and to make that directive or don't you need it? There's I can take direction pretty well. <laughs> 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 I, I know where you want to go. Uh -huh. And I'd like to be part of that um, trip to the cities if we make one, if, if at all possible. Oh, great. Any more discussion? If not. Well, I just have one more question. Um, no, uh, can... Um, would it be appropriate for the uh, city to uh, put a some sort of posting on this Facebook group uh, to let uh, the uh, social media know uh, what we're doing? Sure. City can do it. Mayor can uh, do it. Yeah. All right. I mean, we're, yeah. we're on yeah. tape here. Right. Good idea. Take care of it, Mayor. All right. Take care of it. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Okay. No more business. Meeting oh. adjourned. Here we go.